You can see here a picture that shows all of the different coronary arteries as they course away from the aorta. Remember that the coronary arteries are the first branches of the aorta. You can see the right coronary artery coursing towards the right ventricle and the right atrium. The right coronary artery travels off the right coronary cusp of the aorta and goes in the atrioventricular groove on the right side and then eventually goes to the posterior part of the heart. In most patients, the RCA, or the right coronary artery, gives off the posterior descending, or the interventricular artery. We normally call this the PDA. The PDA supplies the posterior septum. If the right coronary artery gives off the PDA, that's called a right dominant system. If the PDA is given off by the left circumflex, that's called a left dominant system. The right coronary artery also gives off multiple acute marginal arteries. These acute marginals supply the right ventricle with blood. The left main coronary artery courses away from the aorta and takes off from the left coronary cusp. The left main coronary artery is usually a short, wide artery that gives rise to two arteries in most patients. The first branch is the left anterior descending artery. The LAD, or left anterior descending, supplies the apex in the anterior interventricular septum. It travels in the interventricular groove on the anterior portion of the heart. The other branch of the left main coronary artery is the left circumflex artery. The circumflex, or the circ, supplies the lateral and the posterior part of the left ventricle. The left circumflex artery gives off branches called obtuse marginal branches, which are not shown here. These obtuse marginal branches supply the lateral wall of the left ventricle. In the majority of cases, the sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes are supplied by the right coronary artery. As I mentioned before, 80% of the time, the right coronary artery supplies the inferior portion of the left ventricle via the PDA. Again, that means right dominant system. The other 20% of the time, the PDA arises from the left circumflex artery. Coronary artery occlusion most commonly occurs in the left anterior descending artery, which supplies the anterior interventricular septum of the heart. Remember that coronary artery occlusion results from cholesterol plaques, also known as coronary artery disease, as well as thrombosis which is also known as acute coronary syndrome. It's also important to remember that the coronary arteries fill during diastole. This is more true in the left main coronary artery than the right coronary artery. The right coronary artery has flow both in systole and diastole to an equal extent in most patients, whereas the left coronary artery fills primarily during diastole. This is because of elevated intertissue pressures that prevent flow through the smaller branches of the left main coronary artery. The most posterior part of the heart is the left atrium. Enlargement of the left atrium can cause dysphagia, and this is because the left atrium is right next to the esophagus. When the left atrium enlarges, it can compress the esophageal nerve. And left atrial enlargement can also cause hoarseness due to compression of the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is a branch of the vagus nerve. This is also known as Ortner's syndrome. 